Injuries from slips, trips, or falls are one of the most frequent and severe causes of injury in the workplace. In the United States in 2018, there were 240,160 injuries from slips, trips, or falls that are required time off from work. Your employer wants to provide a safe workplace and prevent you from being injured and unable to work. To help you become more aware of the hazards that could lead to a slip, trip, or fall and potentially serious injury, this training will focus on a real-life incident involving an injury that occurred at a skilled nursing community. While completing the training, ask yourself the following questions. What was the employee doing prior to the incident? Were there any warning signs that may have alerted the employee to the hazard? What factors were present leading up to the incident? Could something similar happen in your workplace? During the following scenario involving a slip fall on a freshly mopped dining room floor, you will be asked to answer some questions about the incident and how it could have been prevented. The names have been changed to protect their identity. Shannon, a first shift caregiver with Pine Ridge Skilled Nursing Home, was leaving work after finishing an exhausting shift. Early in Shannon's shift, she was notified that one of the residents she knew well had been transferred to the hospital due to ailing health. In addition, one of Shannon's coworkers had called in sick that morning, so she needed to cover more residents than normal. By the end of her shift, all Shannon wanted to do was get home and decompress. After clocking out, Shannon changed from her work shoes into flip-flops and began to walk through the building towards the employee exit. Normally, she takes a carpeted hallway to get to the exit. On this day, Shannon instead chose to walk through the dining area where she knew her coworkers would be cleaning up after lunch. Shannon chose to walk through the dining area so she could remind them about the resident who had been transferred to the hospital. Prior to Shannon walking through the dining room, housekeeping had mopped the floor. Normally, signs are placed at the end of hallways leading to the dining room, but on this day, the signs were left in the lobby where several hours earlier, housekeeping had cleaned up water a resident had spilled. As Shannon approaches the dining room area, she is greeted by her coworker on the far opposite side of the room, causing her to focus her attention on her coworker and not realize that the floor is wet. Stepping onto the wet floor, she slips and falls. Shannon's coworker immediately comes to her aid and finds that she is seriously injured and calls 911. Shannon is taken to the hospital by ambulance where x-rays show she has broken her right leg. The severity of the injury requires surgery and extensive rehabilitation. In addition, Shannon is unable to work for a month following the injury and now her walking ability is permanently affected. She is also limited with some of her hobbies, such as being an avid hiker. Next, you will be asked a series of questions. Prior to moving along, please pause the video for discussion. What was the employee doing prior to the incident? Leaving work after a stressful shift, taking off her work shoes and putting on flip-flops, taking a different route to the employee exit to speak with a coworker. Were there any warning signs that may have alerted the employee to the hazard? The floor was wet from recently being mopped. While Shannon knew her coworkers were cleaning the dining room, the signage that is typically used to warn staff of wet floors after being mopped were not set up. What factors were present leading up to the incident? Shannon was in a hurry to leave the facility following a stressful shift. Shannon put on flip-flops prior to leaving the facility. What floor signs were not placed in the dining room following it being mopped? How could this have been prevented? Could this or something similar have happened at your workplace? Most likely. So let's identify ways to ensure this type of incident and potential injury does not happen. Block off wet areas from access when possible. Place wet floor signs that are visible from all sides. Signs should be at least knee high, taller if possible. Try to schedule mopping when others will not need to walk through the mopped area. If that is not possible, mop only half of the area at a time or leave a dry path of travel and direct employees to walk only in the dry area. When possible, direct employees to take paths that do not require them to walk in areas that have been cleaned and are wet. Promptly remove wet floor signs after the floor is dry. Follow your employee's footwear policy at all times while on the property. 
Use fans or blowers to dry floors as quickly as possible after being mopped. As you have seen and may already know from personal experience, slip, trip, or fall injuries can be very serious and have a long-term impact on your health. Being aware of the potential hazards and what to do about them can greatly reduce the chances it may result in causing a serious injury to you, a coworker, or a resident.